applicant. Uh, again, I'm going to have them introduce themselves and what they do in the organizations that they represent. Uh, but first, we were asked to talk a little bit about what what is you know manufacturing as a career pathway here in District 214. Um, and so it is at the top here, the, a, a series of four or five courses. And this is a recommendation. Uh, each building will put a little bit different spin on it uh, from a, an introductory course and then a skills-based course and then some, some real work-based learning as you go as junior and senior year. Um, in manufacturing here, you see fabrication technology, a project lead the way dual credit course, computer integrated manufacturing, and then college advanced machine technology, and then college advanced CNC manufacturing. That is quote, you know, the official pathway that's recommended. Now, uh, many students that go to Elk Grove would do three out of the four of these. And then that senior year would be working in an internship and apprenticeship, which you'll can hopefully hear a little bit more about later. So it, it's not, um, mandatory that you go through all of these different courses. This also shows the English, the math, the fine arts, the PE that you would take during this. So each District 214 school offers all these courses. The order might uh, might be a little bit different kind of depending on where you're at. Whoops. Um, you can find all of this information um, from our website and where I'm going to go back to this slide after we're done talking tonight, but our Academic Pathways and Programs Guidebook on the website under the academics tab, and then you have uh, academic programs and pathway guide. So the more information, uh, course descriptions from this career pathway and many others are on that same slide, or sorry, on that website. And I'm gonna go back to this slide before we are, before we are done here tonight. So now we had some people kind of jump in and that's fine. Again, I'm Kyle Burrett. I'm an associate principal at Elk Grove High School. And welcome to the College and Career Ready this night. Um, we're going to have our panel members introduce themselves and kind of talk to us a little bit about what they do in the organizations that they represent. So uh, I'm going to start with Catherine Schmidt from District 214. Catherine, why don't you talk to us first? Good evening. Um, I work at um, the district office. I am a placement specialist and I work specifically with internships. So if students are interested in doing internships, as Mr. Bird just mentioned, typically for manufacturing, that would be uh, when they are rising seniors or in their senior year, um, they would get in contact either with me or with the student success coach in their buildings. Every building has a student success coach. Great, thank you. Uh, Eric, you're next on my screen from District 214. Why don't you tell us who you are and then what courses you teach? Hi, I'm Eric Grace. I am a teacher, a manufacturing teacher at Wheeling High School. I teach those two uh, capstone courses, the College Advanced Machine Tech, as well as the College Advanced CNC uh, Machining courses over at Wheeling. Excellent. Thank you. Anthony. My name is Anthony Genovese. I teach at uh, Rolling Meadows High School, and I teach those uh, college advanced machine tech and CNC courses as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, April from Acne Industries. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm April Elders. I'm the HR director at Acne Industries. We're located in Elk Grove Village. All right, last but not least, Terry, can you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Terry Iverson. I'm a uh, president and owner of Iverson and Company. Uh, we sell machine tools uh, out of Des Plaines, Illinois. And I have an organization named championnow.org, which is an ad advocacy uh, element or arm uh, for manufacturing careers throughout the country. Awesome. Thank you. Again, I just let a few more people in. I'll just reiterate one more time. All of this is being recorded. So if there's anything that you missed, we will post it on our website. Welcome to the College and Career Readiness Night. Um, my name is Kyle Bird. I'm Associate Principal at Elk Grove High School. And we're gonna hear from panelists all um, involved in some way or another in the manufacturing industry, which is, which is pretty broad. Um, and so each one of us kind of plays a role in the workplace, workplace learning or centering around manufacturing. And so I'm gonna um, ask questions of our panel. If you have something you would like to know more specific, you can feel free to put that in the chat. 
We will do our best to answer those questions either at the end or we can follow up from our uh, either our district office or myself via email. So I'm going to start um, with Anthony Genovese. Uh, and he's going to get the first question. And I'm, I'm doing that for a reason because he's going to give us a little bit of insight into uh, how he became a teacher. So Anthony, can you tell us, you know, your professional background and then focusing specifically on your your what courses and things you took in high school and then your first career and then finding uh, teaching because I think we could we could learn a lot from from that story. Okay, um, yeah. So I um, started in high school. I had a machine shop course in there, and um, I took it all throughout high school. Loved it. Um, ended up working at um, going to school for education for a little bit, um, decided that was um, something I wanted to try, and I tried it for a couple of years, and then after that, um, I went in and uh, started working in manufacturing, different manufacturing companies throughout high school and throughout college, and um, once I graduated university, I uh, went and started uh, working at a manufacturing company out in uh, West Chicago, producing a lot of different, some, something called uh, manifolds. And then um, decided to want to go back to teaching and uh, found myself back at uh, 214. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Um, April, I'd like to um, ask you the similar type of question, your professional background, and then what, uh, what do you do specifically at Acne Industries? Sure. Uh, I have been in human resources for almost 20 years, and 15 of those 20 years has been in manufacturing. So I must really like manufacturing. Um, I am the head of the HR department. I do wear many hats, but primarily I work um, as far as strategies, recruitment, employee benefits, um, employee relations, and just more recently over the last uh, few years, really focusing on uh, the community and really working on our workforce and we have been uh, partnering a lot in the last couple of years with uh, with high school students and so that is a big uh, part of my position. Excellent yes we appreciate your work we've benefited from some of your work so so thank you. Well we have benefited <laughs> let me tell you so. Um, Terry I want you to add, um, add a similar question um, not just about what um, Iverson and company does, but then some of your work based on work-based learning and outreach with Champion Now. So can you give us just a little bit more detail about your work in both those areas? Certainly. Um, <clears throat> well, I did a deep dive in manufacturing and technical education in the mid-90s, and I, I spoke to a lot of young people in high schools. And in about 2012, I, I founded Champion Now, which is uh, change how American manufacturing is perceived in our nation. Because you know, manufacturing isn't perceived, the reality of what the manufacturing careers are isn't what the perceptions are, especially with parents. So I've worked very hard over the last 10 years to change perceptions in various ways, sometimes with videos, sometimes with articles and publications. And in 2018, um, I published a book to really highlight people that were promoting manufacturing and doing a, a great job at it. And uh, probably the last thing I'll say is that I started another book that will come out probably this spring. And it's, it's, uh, it's a student and parent book that has two covers. So uh, what it'll have is the ability for parents and students to read the same book from different, from different ed ends and meeting in the middle with questions about careers uh, for young people in manufacturing. Awesome, can't wait. I know uh, there's some 214 people mentioned uh, in, in, your, in your previous book. So we, we've been working with you for many years and we appreciate the partnership. Absolutely. Um, Catherine, can you tell us a little bit about your professional background and then how it relates to your work now within 214? Yes, um, I was a teacher for 40 years, a high school English teacher. And I um, officially retired from teaching in 2017. Um, that was in June. And um, by the beginning of July, I realized that I missed being with my favorite people in the world, which is teenagers. Mm -hmm. and that is no offense intended to the panelists, but I love working with teenagers. 
And so I applied to District 214 and um, I was a career advisor at Rolling Meadows High School until COVID. Um, and then um, after we opened in-person instruction, after uh, remote learning, I was hired by the district office to be a placement specialist. And so um, I spend most of my time trying to recruit industry partners, such as the panelists that are here, um, to whom I am very grateful. I could not do my job without um, some of the people who are on this panel. And I appreciate your assistance greatly. Um, but so I look for industry partners and then I try to connect uh, students with them. As I mentioned earlier in the manufacturing pathway, which has um, a certain level of uniqueness, uh, most of our partners would like um, a fairly high level of background in manufacturing, would like to see um, two complete years of pathway courses. And so that's why typically students who do manufacturing internships are um, either rising seniors or in their senior year. Summer is the best time to do a manufacturing internship because of the time that you have. It can be very hard to schedule manufacturing um, when students are in school because the manufacturing plants tend to be open the exact hours that students are in school. So students who are considering a manufacturing internship, I would strongly encourage you to apply um, the summer after your junior year. Um, once you graduate, you can no longer do an internship. So summer after your senior year doesn't work. Um, but I would encourage you to take the appropriate courses and then apply the summer after junior year. Good. Great, thank you. Good segue. I wanna uh, talk with Eric, you mentioned uh, the courses that you teach. And I briefly mentioned those for those who kind of later on the call, um, I, I put all the, we briefly went over the specific pathway courses in manufacturing. And I'm gonna reference where you can find more information, course descriptions, it's all on the District 214 website. But Eric, you mentioned two specific courses, um, advanced CNC machining. Um, can you tell us what, what is it, what does that mean? What are kids doing in those courses? The equipment they're working on, what skills are they learning? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, students learn the basics. So we learn everything from, first off, how to read a print and how to use measurement tools in order to um, take accurate measurements and understand what we're making and how to make it, but also make it effectively. Um, in order to make it, we use different um, types of manufacturing machines, such as mills and lathes. And then um, in the CNC course, we, we um, so the mills and lathes are all manual. So you're learning how to crank handles and make chips and create parts. Um, and then you can make it on a CNC machine, which is a computer numerical controlled machine that does all the movement for you. So you learn how to program, you learn how to cut. And then after that, you learn all the inspection. So you learn how to operate safely in a shop and really provide a spark and empower students to say, I can do this and I'm interested and this is a great career for me. That's awesome, thanks. Um, Anthony, I wanna talk a little bit more about the courses, um, specifically about what students can earn. Is there any dual credit or like industry credentials that students work on as they go through the pathway? Yep, uh, students earn dual credit with Harper um, in both the classes. Uh, there's two different classes at Harper that they earn credit with. And then they also have the opportunity to get uh, certificate, industry certificates from NIMS, which is the National Institute of Metalworking Skills, uh, which uh, companies uh, will recognize. No, and those are great. You know, I think we'll want to talk a little bit more about those industry credentials um, from a employer side in a little bit. But I do want to make sure we get to, we had a kind of a, a late uh, panel ad. Phil Shammer, um, Buffalo Grove High School, uh, is, is an instructor there. And so I'm going to kind of throw a question at him right away, let him uh, introduce himself. And I want him to talk about what are the external experiences, field trips, or just what, what do you do with high school kids to get them outside of the classroom and get them excited and engaged with manufacturing? So Phil, I know you're there. Awesome. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little late. We had a after school program here that we're running at the high school with middle schools, middle school students coming in. So we were working with that. And then I jumped over to this as quickly as possible. Okay. Um, I know all the schools in the district, we really focus on bringing um, 
some partnerships into the school and and have people talk about their experience in manufacturing. I know there's some local companies that um, do some apprenticeship programs. We try to have them come in to explain more about those apprenticeship programs. Um, and again, just the idea of um, any any of our friends that we have in the industry um, or just other people that we know, we have them just to it, we have them come in just to explain their experiences, uh, maybe give some examples of some of the work that they work on. Um, I know Anthony facilitated a great thing. I believe it was last year with a company. Um, if I remember correctly, it was Acme or it might've been a different company. Oh yeah, Acme. Awesome. Just from start to finish, what happens when somebody designs a part, when they go through actually making the part, when they go through testing the part and, and going to production? Um, there was a great interaction and some great videos and, and students got to ask a lot of questions about the process of, we have a design idea. How do we actually get that to be made and put it in somebody's hands? Um, so again, just the experiences of what somebody sees. We have a lot of people talk about that. Awesome. Thank you. And no worries about being late. I know you guys are doing great stuff with middle school kids and uh, it's tough to run, uh, be in two places at once. So I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, April, I want to direct the next question at you. We, we've heard a little bit about the terms internships, apprenticeships, kind of thrown around. Mm -hmm. And if you can talk a little bit more from, from the HR side, from really the host side, and you can use some of the experience you have with Elk Grove students or others um, here, tell us all about that, how that works, and then what do students do when they're with you, when they're not in the classroom? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really proud to say that we currently have um, three high school students. Well, one is not a high school student. I have to not call my high school student because he did graduate last year. But we have three, three students from the area. Um, we have a junior and a senior from Rolling Meadows High School working with us for right now. And we actually met them at a TMA Precision Machining Competition. But thanks to Anthony and our par partnership with G-Camp, both those students uh, mentioned that they heard that Acme Industries was a good company to work for. And so we hired them over the summer and they did such a great job that they are actually working during the school year. And again, one is a junior and one is a senior. Um, and then we, we did partner last year with Elk Grove High School. And we had a student who started in October of uh, his senior year. And forgive me for not using the right terminology, but he did get credit for that. That was like apprenticeship and he got early dismissal and he came to work for us. And when he graduated, actually two months before we, he graduated, we offered him a full-time position because he did such a great job and he is a, a CNC machinist. Um, so those are um, some of the, uh, the students that we're working with. Um, sorry, I wanna make sure I get all your questions uh, that you asked me there that I'm answering. Um, but we also offer tuition reimbursement. We'll partner with local schools, whether it's Harper mm. College or any of the local schools that if students either want to get further their education. Um, so we're, we're doing a lot, a lot of different things, but we really kind of tailor it to the individual to what they're looking for. And really the only requirement is that you have to be 16, at least 16 years old. Um, there are some, some things you can't do until you're 18. But we found that there's really not that many. And so, you know, uh, so far, sorry, there's a train going by. You can't hear it, fortunately, but it, it's, sorry, just give me a second. But um, uh, fortunately, we have now um, worked with a lot of high school students and the youth, and they are really a big part of our workforce. And we're really glad to have them. And um, really, that's where the future is right now. That's awesome. Thank you. And I wanted uh, just to hit a couple of the points for the either the students or the parents that are that are listening here. Again, those were those are students, current students, juniors, seniors in high school. They're getting paid during the school day. Uh, yes. How in, in each each school has a maybe a, a different way that they schedule it. But students take their core classes. And again, briefly at the beginning of this call, I showed you the course layout. Those students take their English, their math, their uh, PE, and then they're out working in industry, internships, apprenticeships. There's varying degrees, um, but their paid experiences, and many, we know, and Acne has been a great partner. Many end up either working there full time after or going to school, which, um, and you brought up a key point. 
school paid for many times by um, the industry or the company that they're working for. And you mentioned TMA or other type of call them like trade school partners um, where, where you're still going to school. You're not, you're not done. I don't want anyone leaving this call thinking that we are, we're, we're pumping out fully polished, ready to go. No, we're just the first step in your education. No matter what you do within the manufacturing field, there's further training needed. And everybody on this call would agree with that, but we're really just trying to get you out. Um, but I know making money um, while you're in high school is always a good thing. And there's lots of opportunities to do that uh, within uh, while you're in high school here in manufacturing. Um, uh, Kyle, yeah, can I just add ahead. to that? Cause you touched mm -hmm. upon that. So not only are they earning uh, money, but especially if they start with us and they stay with us as part-time employees, you earn sick days, you earn vacation days, you get holiday pay. And then if you work part-time with us for a year or so, and you, and you do continue on after you graduate, you are a full-time employee earning more benefits, but you get your seniority from when you started. And we just are, um, without name names, the senior that we have um, from Rolling Meadows, he plays football. And so we let him take the time off, kept him on the payroll and uh, he, the season ended and he's coming back. And so he's kept his seniority and his, and his status because and he's already told us that when he graduates, he, he's interested in working full-time. So um, you're not just earning money, you're earning benefits and other things. So I'm glad you brought that up, Kyle. Great. Thank you. Um, Terry, I want to ask you a little bit, because you have a lot of experience in this kind of field of, of youth workforce development, but um, what, what advice do you have for high schoolers or entering, if they're thinking about this just very, very broad career field? We've heard a lot about some specific careers in manufacturing, but from your perspective, what advice do you have for young people? Well, back when uh, some of us old people uh, were young, uh, we didn't have uh, YouTube, we didn't have the web. <laughs> and so uh, the first thing I encourage young people is, is you know, do Google searches online and, and look into what the salaries are, uh, which are going up as, as the uh, crisis with talent is getting worse. The, the good side, the flip side of that is, is the salaries and the wages are going up. But um, you know, do a deep dive in what you enjoy, and and you know, make sure that that what you're learning in school is relevant to really what you want to do in life. Uh, I think in this country, we don't our youth aren't challenged enough about what they really enjoy and what they really want to do. Um, I try through the, my organization, Champion Now. I try to offer a lot of information, a lot of data, and a lot of viewpoints, and a lot of examples of people that have done very, very, very well. But there's other organizations there, you know, there's plenty of resources within our, our schools and in our technical colleges and community colleges. But you know what, the web is a great place and you can learn a lot. And there's a lot of uh, video and visual components that can teach you a lot. That's great. That's, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, this question is either for Phil or Anthony. I want to talk a little bit about the or the orientation courses. Um, I'm kind of hoping one of you teaches like a fabrication tech where, or one of the early courses in the pathway. What we we heard from Eric before about like what they're doing at the end of the pathway, junior senior year. What are just some of the very basics they do in uh, in a freshman or sophomore course, either at Buffalo Grove or at Rolling Meadows? Well, I'll, I'll talk about that very first entry level class, if that's okay. Perfect. That, that's what I need. Anthony yeah. can yep. talk about the, the, the kind of in between level. Um, one of the courses that I teach is called engineering essentials. And that is the introductory into engineering in general, um, that really gets students in that problem solving mindset. Um, and, and how do you create something to solve a problem? It really gets students thinking about how to design something, um, and it really gets their minds going on how do we take something from paper and at least get it into a 3D model, or how do we get it into a technical drawing, solving problems, kind of getting it into the technical drawing. So that's one of the courses I teach. Um, and I know, Anthony, I think you teach a, a couple of the other kind of in-between stepping stone classes. 
Um, yeah, I teach that same essential class as you, uh, you know, you hit it, the nail on the head, you know, how do you go from that thought in your head to an actual product that you can hold in your hand? You know, what is that process that you go through? Um, you know, all the technical drawings and all the 3D modeling that goes along with it. Okay, that's good. And I wanted uh, people on the call that I get like an idea for what you'd be doing as a freshman or sophomore versus a junior or senior. So that kind of from that design to build standpoint, over their hopefully four years or maybe three years within within the pathway. So so thank you. Um, Catherine, um, this question kind of directed towards you. So if we had a student who maybe feels, you know, they're, they're entering their senior year um, and they're like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I, I would like to get involved in this now. I took some other things, I didn't like it. Is it too late? Is there any options to try out? Um, something for a short amount of time, i.e. like a micro internship. What, what advice do you have for that type of student? We offer uh, two internships, a micro internship, which is 30 hours over the course of the entire semester, or a traditional internship, which is 60 hours over the course of the semester. Those are unpaid experiences. Um, so what April was talking about was an apprenticeship that's a far more intense program um, with many, many more hours that need to be fulfilled, but the student is also paid for that. Um, one of the things about internships in manufacturing, as I mentioned, is that they can be hard during the school year because we really don't have shadowing experiences. We have work-based learning where a student is working with one or more supervisors and he is being instructed, but at the same time, the student is expected to perform um, whatever tasks the supervisor or supervisors request. So one of the things that I have been told and um, April Terry, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I've been told that in manufacturing during the school year, it can be hard to do an internship because of the times that the facility um, is open and available to interns. Sometimes they have evening shifts, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they can take interns in the evening. Um, and so it has to be enough time for a student to learn the skill and practice the skill. And if the student is getting there at 3.30 in the afternoon, and the plant closes at 4, 4.35 o'clock, that simply isn't enough time. Um, and so unfortunately with manufacturing, my strong suggestion would be the summer, whether it's a micro or a traditional, um, the summer is definitely a better time. Also, um, in all honesty, I don't know of partners who will accept fully um, unskilled interns in manufacturing. Most manufacturing partners would like to see at least a basic class, um, such as the essentials or maybe um, one uh, project lead the way class, uh, fabrication technology one and two, uh, something where the student is not really walking in uh, totally unskilled. I would say that would be more of a shadowing than an internship. And unfortunately, since COVID, we have not been able to get shadowing experiences because it brings large numbers of people into the company. Um, and, and that's still considered you know, somewhat uh, difficult for the company to manage at this time with all the COVID restrictions. Okay, okay, thanks. I wanna switch gears a little bit and talk if we can briefly about working in the industry. So maybe like post high school. So I'll start with you, April, and then I'll ask you, Terry. For one, what, what, what does someone do at Acne Industries and what does their and employees typical day look like if there is such a thing? <laughs> yeah, well, so we have about 140 employees and out of the 100, um, out of the 140, 100 of them are, are what I call in production. Um, and out of that, the majority of production are CNC machinists. So we're a CNC um, machine shop. We're 
do really large complex components. Um, so I'm gonna kind of just talk about the CNC machinists because we do, but we have a support staff. We have human resources, we have counting, we have engineering, we have shipping receiving, but the majority is production and the majority of positions are related to CNC machinists. Um, so we have different level machinists, but because we work really complex parts, you know, we have some small parts and bigger parts. So we have different level of uh, machinists and that machinist basically um, we talked about, um, I think it was you, Eric, that were talking about one of the classes is that, you know, you're responsible for, you know, setting up the machine and programming, pro programming that, and then taking our, taking out, inspecting it. So you're really, you're really babysitting, so to speak, that machine the whole time. It's not just about pushing buttons. You know, this is really big, complex parts. Uh, we have milling and turning machines. We have both. Right now, most of our work is milling, um, but really big, big machines that, that. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's a faster pace. You know, there is some downtime in between, but you really have to be on that machine because these parts are being made over several hours. It's not something that is done in 30 minutes or an hour. It's several hours. Um, and uh, so that's kind of day-to-day -to -day -to -day life of a CNC machinist, but it's an opportunity. I'm going to be really selling the position because it's really like, not like a lot of other fields you go into because there are so many levels you you work your way up through it it's not just your cnc machine that's it you move up we have like three different levels and then you become a setup and you could become a lead and really you know if you work for a small department uh you know say accounting or something there may only be so many people in in the in, in there but when you have 80 people there's a lot of room to grow and learn from there so so really, it, it, you know, and Terry talked about this too, about the shortage of the, of the labor force and that um, it's, it's, it's a very competitive market. It's, it's you, you, know, you, you use your skills from school, you have to have math and technical skills, um, but it's really, really a great industry. And I wanted to touch something about Catherine said is at least with us, and I, I, I'm sure Terry is the same and other companies is that we actually, we operate two shifts. We operate to midnight. Don't worry, we're not gonna have your students working that late. Um, so yes, summer is ideal because on first shift there's more support, but we've made it work. We have two students who, again, who are juniors and seniors and they're working at 4.30 to a couple hours a night. We work with their schedule a couple days a week because yes, school is priority, uh, sports are priority. And so we will work around adapt to that. And I'm sure there's a lot of companies in the area that will do that. So. Um, you know, a lot of flexibility there. Thank you. Terry, same kind of thing. What, and I know you guys are more maybe on a service side or rebuilt um, of machines, but like, so tell us what, what that would involve a day-to-day -day at Iverson and company. Well, we, we're a customer service uh, uh, organization, sales and service. So we have, a, you know, customer service representatives inside accounting, uh, inside sales service people that service equipment out in, in the field, whether it be manual or, or CNC, uh, applications people that program machines and, and train people, and then rebuilding uh, personnel that, you know, clean machines, take machines apart, uh, requalify, recertify equipment. But uh, in manufacturing in general, you know, there's such a wide ar array of, of opportunities some people are working with their hands, their mind and their hands both, but you know, there's inspection possibilities, there's uh, quality control, you know, as, as April said, shipping and receiving, you know, sales positions. There, there's so many different uh, components in a manufacturing company, uh, some of which, you know, business majors would, would be applicable or accounting majors. So uh, it's a very wide net and uh, there's something for everybody, basically. That's great. That's what kind of what I wanted to hit on a little bit is that when we say manufacturing, we do have uh, programs and, and Eric spoke to this and our teachers where, that are getting to a specific skill of CNC operating. But part of what we do in our, in our courses is like career exploration of, it's it's vast. We have inject mold. There is you know obviously CNC, but there's heat treating. There's a lot of different um, industries that are considered manufacturing, and so there's a lot of different opportunities that we try and expose 
uh, young people to in our schools um, because there is again there's a vast opportunity in many different and partners and, and pathways here. So um, thank you for kind of sharing that because that's what I want. I want people to, to get a feel for. Yes, we can we can train your young person to be more on a CNC mill or lathe, but there are there are other other applicable skills that they're learning as well. So thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Tara. One thing I want to point out is I'm I'm paying attention to the young people uh, or at least the names that are on on the screen, and half of them are, are female and half of them are male, mm. and I'd like to point out that I've been a big advocate that we need more uh, women and more you know females in our in our industry, and and I think when I go around and I speak at schools I'm finding that a lot more young ladies are showing interest. And and I think the industry as a whole is embracing, uh, you know, more women in, in our industry. And I think that's that's a very positive trend that I've noticed. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I am conscious of time, and I want to give each panelist an opportunity to kind of give some some close closing remarks or anything that they wanted to mention that maybe didn't fit into our into our questions here. So. Uh, Eric, I'll start with you and give you a chance to thank uh, just any kind of uh, imparting thoughts about manufacturing or the work that you do and then getting young stu young people into this uh, career field. Yeah, um, if you enjoy building things and challenging yourself and being up and out of the seat, this is definitely the career pathway for you. Um, every day is something different. We're working on different projects, different parts. We're learning technical skills, but most importantly, we're up we're out of our seats and we're moving and problem solving all day. So if that's something interesting to you, I can't, could not recommend this course enough. It's great. Thank you, Phil. What do you got? Uh, I was going to say pretty much the exact <laughs> same thing again. Um, if you love working hands-on, if you love being up and moving around, um, I was one of those students in high school where when I sat in a desk, I just, I lost focus and it wasn't for me, but when I would take tech classes or, or woods or, or manufacturing, I would be up, I'd be moving around. And that's where I, I really showed my skills and found my passion. Um, and I would highly suggest that for anybody here, you're up, you're moving, you're working with your hands, you're creating things. So if you love that, this is definitely the place to be. Great. Thank you, Anthony. Absolutely. Um, you know, same mirror and the same things, you know, uh, you know, the great thing that at 214 also with our courses, you know, we have our after school activities that kind of like mirror it and go along with it from our high mileage competition from robot competitions to the precision TMA competitions that we enter into. So there's so much in there for uh, you guys to uh, explore, explore and experience. Good. Yeah, thank you for bringing up some of those. Yeah, lots of opportunities to get involved in and out of the classroom. Thank you. Um, Catherine, uh, rounding out the 214 team, anything else to add? Um, just a couple of things. Um, what Anthony just said, I think is really important. Sometimes students simply don't have room in their schedule to take as many of the CTE classes as they would like to take. And so becoming involved in extracurriculars such as the robotics team, high mileage club, things like that, that gives you experience in manufacturing that you may not have access to in coursework. And that's still a very valid um, experience that certainly could help qualify you for an internship. Um, the other thing that I wanna mention, um, I probably should have clarified when I spoke about internships. The types of experiences that April is talking about at ACME um, are for the most part apprenticeships. One of the differences between an apprenticeship and an internship is that apprentices typically have time built into their school schedule to be on site um, at, with the industry partner. And typically with internships, that is not the case. They are outside of school hours. So that would be a big factor when a student is trying to decide maybe between an apprenticeship and an internship. But I wanna encourage everyone who is interested to either connect with me via email or with the student success coach in your building. Every building has a student success coach and I'm happy to let you know who that is if you're not sure. Typically they're in the College and Career Center or in student services and they will be glad to work with you to see what kind of a work-based experience would be best for you. Good, thank you. 
Uh, April, anything, any closing remarks from you? Well, uh, everyone has said it so well, but I just want to reiterate that manufacturing is an essential industry. You can provide a very stable and great career growth. And as Terry and others mentioned, uh, you also get exposure to many different uh, departments. And I, you know, like I said, I think it's just a great career opportunity. And you don't have to choose one or the other. You can you can learn on the job and continue your education. You could do a combination of that any any way you want. You're not you're not forced into you have to get this four year degree or not. You can you can do a little bit of both. Do two year degree, get certification. You can do however you want. You can learn on the job or can continue your education. There's many many options. Good. Yes. Important. Thank you. Uh, Terry, anything that you'd like to uh, say as closing remarks? Um, well, I agree with everything that, that everything that's been said by the all the panelists, and I'm privileged to know each each and every one of you and, and worked with each and one every one of you. Um, when I was a young person, billions of years ago, uh, I was an AP Physics and AP Calculus student, and quite honestly, it was so theoretical I was bored to tears. So as Philip said, you know, when you can actually learn something where there's relevance to what you're learning, it makes all the difference in the world. And, and so that being said, uh, there are manufacturers, and, and I call on thousands of manufacturers, all of which, ourselves included, April included, that will help you pay for education because we need skills and we need training for skills. But that doesn't mean you have to go into hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt to get the skills that you know employers like us need. Uh, and I'll just close with one story. I was speaking at Oakton uh, years ago to some parents and after it was a small group and after a, a, a mom came up to me in tears, she said, Mr. Iverson, I cannot believe what I just learned today. Uh, I said, well, why are you crying? Did, did I say something wrong? And she goes, no, I, these are tears of joy. We could not afford to send my son or my daughter to college and you're telling me that that doesn't mean hope is all lost and so some people can't afford you know to spend a, lot, a, a tremendous amount of money for education to get into the workforce and there's our alternatives and the fact that you know if you make a decision that manufacturing is not for you that's okay but too many people don't even know it exists not to mention that you can make a very good living in manufacturing so I'll, I'll end with that. That's great. Thank you. That's a great way to end. Um, I do, as promised, want to share one more time um, all the things that were talked about tonight, some contact information, the pathway, the programs, the internships, apprenticeships. You will find more information about all of that on the District 214 website, uh, d214.org. Um, under the academics side, and then real specific on the arrow, their academic pathways and programs. But really, it's a great source of information for all the things that we were talking about tonight, from the courses and, and the people and the opportunities that exist within manufacturing. So uh, I have to go because